Hello, this is David Hilscher. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world that have been working for decades outside mainstream who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so be sure to click on the bu subscribe button below and, you, and the little bell next to it so you'll be alerted when our next video drops. Oftentimes in my videos, including the last one, I came, I came at the end with a list of conclusions, a list of points that each one of them can shock you to the core if you're not used to listening to this. I forget sometimes that, my goodness, not all of you have been hanging around dissident scientists for decades and decades, so all this kind of stuff doesn't, doesn't uh, it kind of shocks you. And if it shocks you, then, well, you can take a look right up up here. Uh, I have a link to a video, a, um, video that I did on if I shock you what to do and how to get through that and so you don't go running screaming into the night. It's normal. So uh, you don't want to do that. So um, anyways, I'm going to talk about one of those things that I put on that list today, which I, which I haven't been talking about. And of course, that is mass increase. Mass increase as a part really of the physical world, the universe around us. That mass increase is a normal part of life. That the Earth is expanding and growing and gaining mass, and so is the moon, and so are all the planets, and maybe even the stars, and all those things. And it causes all these kinds of things and causes evidence. And here are some of the evidence that some critical thinkers have listed through the years. The first two are come from my mentor, Dr. Ricardo Carazzani, a doctor in physics who has shown Einstein's special relativity wrong in various ways, both, for both uh, mathematically and, f and physically. And uh, in that, he also said that a part of this, the universe is actually mass increase, and that the perihelion advance, that is the perihelion advance, for instance, of Mercury, uh, is actually caused by max increase. The pioneer slowdown is actually called by, caused by mac, uh, mass increase. And there are, of course, other people, uh, like Stephen Hurl, uh, who talks about dinosaurs and the expanding Earth. If you don't uh, know about that, click on my video right there. I put a, I'll put a link to it, which I did a, just a few videos ago, which is a book you, everyone should read if you're a critical thinker. And it talks about the gigantism of flora and fauna. Of course, fauna is not fawns, but animals plants and animals and those gargantuan ones could not exist in today's gravitational field that means that the mass of the earth had to be less in millions and millions of years ago and of course in that same book you have ancient sand dune heights on earth being higher way 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 back and of course I asked Dr. James Maxwell about this who is the premier geologist of our time in expansion tectonics and he goes oh yeah that's uh, don't really know about it read Steve Hurl's book so you must do that, and just FYI, I'm going to be interviewing Steve, and he is getting his computer stuff together. He's in the UK, so it's going to be a long distance uh, interview, but it should be great. And of course, Earth expansion cannot uh, uh, Earth expansion cannot only be volume. That if you look at on expansiontectonics.com.org.net, I can't remember just expansion tectonics and dot something. That's Dr. James Maxwell, and he has on there. If you can take a look at it, the expansion uh, tectonics uh, simulations of all uh, all of his models, going from very small all the way up, way past even what most people in expansion tectonics, like Neil Adams, goes back only to when the uh, uh, crust started to crack apart. Well, he goes even further, and if you look at it, you're think, saying to yourself, and you're correctly so, that those <clears throat> predicted sizes and models by the geologists, the the preeminent geologist of expansion tectonics of our time, Dr. James Maxlow, pretty much shows to us, shows us and says and says screaming to us that there is in fact mass increase, and he actually is looking into that, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But um, let's take a look at one thing, which is the perihelion advance, which maybe you've never heard of, and I was thinking I made that's why I put this video up, and somebody says, "Oh, I started watching this video, and then it went away." Well, uh, the reason it went away is because I'm redoing it to show you that what the perihelion advance is. Uh, I will just read it for you because it's a lot easier. The theory of relativity predicts that as or the as it orbits the sun, Mercury does not exactly retrace the same path each time, but rather swings around over time. We therefore we say therefore that the per perihelion, perihelion, the point on its orbit where Mercury is closest to the sun, 
advances. And you can see that, those little dots there, uh, it, where, where you can see that as it goes around, sort of wobbles, so that closest point uh, actually moves. It doesn't stay the same. And that is uh, one of the predictions, supposedly, of general relativity. But of course, Dr. Karazani, who is uh, shown relativity wrong, says no, in fact, a lot of this has to do with mass increase. And it actually describes other things like the pioneer slowdown, which why, how does that work? Well, the pioneer slow, will slow down if the mass of the solar system is getting bigger. And the, as it's outside the solar system, all the, the because of the mass of the solar system is getting better, the gravity uh, that is uh, being uh, felt by the pioneer is going to be bigger and bigger. It's like, hey, a bigger body is tugging at it, so it's going to slow down as it's traveling away, as it's traveling away from it. So those two things are really from Karazani. And then there's the philosophical sort of reason it's not an ev evidence is that things are made of parts and parts can be put back together. This I sort of get back from get from uh, Glenn Borkert and uh, parts of parts and also just thinking about this uh, philosophically that why is it the case when we have atoms and those are what we call mass in our unicosm here in our, in our sort of visible world and where we live in the celestial bodies and the atomic structures below us in this world, in this realm yeah, we have atoms and they're made of parts and those parts can be blown apart and they can be put back together so uh, it would be uh, very uh, easy to imagine that mass increase could happen, in fact, inside the Earth and other celestial bodies. Of course, possible mass increase mechanisms. Uh, remember what I always say? Thousands of, of, of scientists who work outside the mainstream, they have found the problems, they have come up uh, with new ideas, and uh, uh, have solved them, and they've come up with new theories. Well, uh, yes, they have. And here are some examples, except for the top one. The top one says special relativity because as you get closer to speed of light, mass increase, of course. It doesn't happen in particle accelerators. They, ha they have to unteach that with uh, uh, the students at the uh, Stanford Linear Accelerator. I was told that by, see my movie, EinsteinWrong.com. We got a person saying it, a doctor of physics who is a particle physicist, experimentalist. Um, and of course, uh, people below my uh, most popular video, Special Relativity is Why Special Relativity is Wrong, say, Dave, you're stupid. It's not mass that increases, it's relative mass that increases. Mass does increase, relative mass increases. Now, if you're a critical thinker, and if you're with me and you're a subscriber, or if you're not, and you think that is totally bonkers, the idea that the mass doesn't increase but relative mass does, you and I agree, then you should subscribe. Hey, hit, hit, the, hit the subscribe button right down there, right down there. Yeah, because, hey, we're all in this together. That's why this channel exists. Combining of nucleons and electrons inside celestial bodies. Dr. James Maslow talks about that. David, David and Bob De Hilster's particle model, we talk about that. And pair production, which is this idea that you can take um, two photons or something like that and bam, it appears uh, uh, an electron or something like that. Uh, I'm sorry, my it's late at night here and I'm not remember what pair production is right now, but um, pair production is something that says that looks pretty much like from energy you get a particle. But we know in our models that that's not true. It's they got to come from somewhere. But re regardless, the pair production, look it up. And Neil Adams suggests, and he has his uh, own theory about that. And like I said, I love all the theories because we got to keep trying and keep tr coming up with new things because the current stuff ain't working. Um, barriers to mass increase. Well, there is the no mechanism in physics that's the straw man set up by mainstream geologists. The mainstream geologists say it's sort of a circular argument. Well, um, there is no, I, I don't see anything in Physics 101 that talks about mass increase. Um, I don't, I'm not getting, I didn't go to the Chappelle University, university.naturalphilosophy.org, which we are actually building this year and will launch, uh, uh, officially launch its uh, construction. Uh, it's already sort of there, but we're going to be officially launching it at our um, conference in the end of June at the University of Connecticut. Uh, anyways, that is something that the mainstream people in geologists says, well, if there's no physics to mass increase. No one says that. No one says that it should exist. 
then how could mass increase and therefore how could expansion tectonics really exist? Therefore, we don't believe any of it. So that's one of the problems with uh, mass increase is uh, uh, it's the circular <laughs> argument, I guess. Um, true, I'm, I'm, I'm only reporting it, folks. Don't shoot the messenger. It's also uncomfortable uncomf scientifically. The idea that everything's increasing in mass, everything, you know, uh, it's sort of uncomfortable and mass increasing changes everything in physics yep it certainly does so what does David D. Hilster and why do I talk about this to wrap this up because uh, you know I try to trying to make these a little bit shorter and sweeter well why does Dave subscribe to mass increase well expansion tectonics expansion tectonics and expansion tectonics to me is the first uh, uh, reason. Uh, atomic construction inside celestial bodies, I think that's just, it's, it's accepted that we are made of star stuff and the heavy atoms, they're always telling, are made inside of suns. Well, why can't we make, uh, you know, helium and hydrogen, uh, hydrogen and helium, you know, and upwards uh, start from nothing. So if you have nucleons and electrons or G1 particles, what do you want to call them? And they come together, they make an atom, you gain you gain mass. I also like it because I think it's radical. Shake it up, turn over the apple cart, as as Neil Adams says. And the reason I I thought about this, why did I put this down? Because I put down my gut feelings uh, a lot of times when I'm putting these uh, talks together, and I think, well, why did I put that? And I have a really good reason, and that is because science, if you look at it, the Big Bang, particle physics, relativity, uh, there's no physical mechanism or model for light or gravity. You've got quantum mechanics all over the place. You've got parallel whatevers, spooky action at distance, all of these things, everything. It's so wrong. You just want to like, is there something that can smash this with a hammer? And mass increase is certainly one of them. It's sort of like coming along and BAM! You can't, you're not even close to this. You got to start all over. This smashes things. So I sort of like that. And, and, and truly, I just think it's uh, philosophically, there are things made of parts and parts can be put back together, folks. So um, what we call mass at the level where we are, uh, we don't call uh, necessarily uh, uh, when we weigh things, the mass that we see, the atomic mass. Uh, atomic mass can be constructed just like it can be destructed. So I think that gives you an idea of what we say and what we talk about when we talk about mass increase inside the world of the critical thinker in the CMPS. And if you like this kind of thing, you should think about coming to the CMPS because what's so nice about it? We all speak the same language. A lot of us who like this talk to our friends around us and they go, what are you talking about? You guys are crazy. So you may want to think about it. Just go to 2018.naturalphilosophy.org and join us. It's really cheap to get there, uh, cheap to, to, to join. It's not like a $500 fee. I think it's like a hundred some dollars. Uh, if you're a student, uh, we have student discounts, whatever it is. Uh, maybe we'd like to see you there and we also allow people to present their papers and we do a, a lot of interesting things it's really worth worth the trouble but anyways like I said always don't take anything that I say on faith stay critical stay thinking I am Dave D. Hilster. I am your science therapist ciao for now